is evident in, in our daily lives. It, it allows us to better understand and make sense of people's relationships to events, experiences and objects. A very important aspect of positioning theory is understanding people's rights and duties. When teachers are thinking about their duties, they're very clear about their duties. They may see them as listed in their roles. A role is what is written down in a situation. A role is static. Your role does not change throughout. Position is how you perceive what is valued, what you perceive has status, what you perceive is is the appropriate way to do something. Role is you will arrive at uh, 8.30 at your school, um, you will teach this many classes, so, uh, you have a responsibility over a certain number of people, that is your role, it's written down. Position is how you perceive um, the moment by moment interactions you're having with people, um, your influence, what we would term your agency in a school, the power you perceive you have or don't have to affect change. So position and role are very different. But the sort of duties we're thinking about in positioning theory is the duty such as the duty of care that teachers have a strong sense of in relationship to their students. Teachers also have rights and when we think about teachers rights we think about their right to maybe have access to a photocopier, books and tools like that but when we're thinking about positioning theory we're thinking about a different set of rights. If we think about our students, our students have duties and rights or they might think that they have a right to have their work marked and returned to them in a timely fashion. And teachers then equally sense that as a, um, a duty. We see that there's a flow on then to what people do and say. We act in relationship to what we perceive as our duty, so that's what we do. Um, and how we talk is influenced by, again, our sense of our rights and our duties. If we are not clear and aware of how students perceive their rights and duties, and then when we see how they're behaving, we may not make as much sense of it unless we take a perspective through their understanding of their rights and duties. If the students deem that uh, it's the teacher's duty to make the subject interesting, uh, then they'll feel that the teacher might have failed in that uh, expectation and therefore their rights have been denied. So they may think that classes that are not highly engaging is a failure on the duty of the teacher to fulfil the right of the student. So that's a way to think about our practice, which is slightly different to how we normally do. But in fact, it's quite influential if we want to understand why students are perhaps um, ill at ease, uh, maybe even rebe rebellious or recalcitrant in class. If we examine what's going on through the perception of rights and duties, we might end up with a different way of responding to concerns that we've had in previous ways. So there we've just talked about the relationship of the relationship between students and teachers as perceived through an understanding of rights and duties. And a way to move forward there would be to think about uh, listing what teachers perceive are their duties to their students, what they perceive are their rights as teachers, and having students think also about their duties and rights. Students are very aware often more about their rights than their duties, their duties to themselves as a learner. So, so far we've considered now the rights and duties of the teacher, rights and duties of students, which is uh, what we call in positioning theory the position that people have taken up. And we've also now considered that uh, what people perceive as their duty or their right influences what they do and say. But it's not as simple as that. There is another component to positioning theory which is worth considering and that's the role of stories or storylines. So if you are a student at a particular school, then there's a particular way of um, behaving, there's different things that you value, there's particular things you believe in. So they're what we call the storylines and they're propagated um, in stories about the institution and they're propagated in how we talk about our rights and how we perceive our duties. Teachers also have storylines around their practice. And, you know, the, the simple line might be, if it isn't broken, don't fix it. I'm not changing my practice. But if we look at um, students' rights and students' duties, that's a way to have teachers reconsider their storyline around their practice. So they might 
um, be saying that this is what I do, um, but when we look at their practice, it's not actually what they do. So they say and they do don't match. So we do need to examine the storylines in a school. A school, a school propagates um, its image through its stories about itself, and teachers um, perpetuate their practices by their historical knowing of what's valued in the school. So unless there is a consistent set of um, stories that will support a new methodology of teaching or a new pedagogical approach, if the storylines don't change, then it's unlikely that the practices will change. So, so I think positioning theory allows us to understand the minutiae of the everyday with a view to better enabling and giving people stronger degrees of confidence. To, I'm hoping that um, this offering of positioning theory helps you think about how things work in your school and with your students and with your teachers.